I like John's face over there. <laughs> hey, guys, uh, have you heard about the Kentucky meat shower of 1876? I have not, and I like your face, too. This is uh, this is an odd one for me. Um, anything that involves, like, meat and then maybe just uh, stuff falling from the sky? I, I don't showers? know. Showers? <laughs> Two <laughs> hobbies of yours? You, you got meteors, uh, meat showers. So I see where they went with this thing. So meteor here, shower. Yeah, here, here in March, 1876, residents of Bath County, Kentucky experienced something quite bizarre. Over a period of several minutes, what seemed like chunks of red meat rained down from the sky, covering an area about, I think they're estimated probably about 100 by 50 yard area. Hmm. 100 by 50. Okay. Yeah. Somebody do the it's math. Very small. 100 yeah. by 50. That's like a Isolated football field. Isolated shower right, right there. Yeah. It's basically it's, a football, it's a football field. field. Football field. Yeah. yeah. Just a couple of minutes just raining down this red meat. Hmm. Um, the meat appeared to be beef, but uh, I guess I'm, upon further examination, some claimed it was lamb some claimed it was deer some said it was bear horse or even human i guess there was a lot of speculation back in the day there maybe um, duck duck's kind of dark duck, yeah so uh th- yeah. this is this red is the meat. odd it could be <laughs> duck, duck meat is meat. dark yeah. yeah this is the odd red part meat. of it yeah. the two gentlemen who tasted it declared it to be mutton or venison <laughs> I, yes. wanted to, I wanted to know who tasted <laughs> exactly. that like, somebody yeah. was like no, I'll taste it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, this ain't human for sure. I'll tell you that. I've had it. It's not it. Okay. It's got to be mutton. <laughs> it's not human. <laughs> yeah. Did they cook yeah. it? Or, I mean, yeah. what are we talking about here? I don't, no, they, they, they did. Just yeah. He no, just said fine. he did. Yeah. I don't know. So there's so, there, there's been a several theories. So, so they have been proposed. <laughs> but the most likely explanation, as uh, pointed about pointed out by the Scientific America at the time, uh, was a large pack of vultures regurgitating their meal oh, while God. flying overhead, leading to the meat shower. Okay, I mean, that, a large is that like, even how possible? big are the chunks at this point? <laughs> a flock of vultures. Right. What is that? What is a flock of vultures actually called? There's always a name when there's Not a, a group flock of, of them, seagulls. Right? <laughs> okay. Flock of vultures. Wh- where were we in that point in time in scientific? America. That's what I was trying to think. Like, when was this? 1870? 1876. Yeah. They just thought, okay, maybe there was just. Now, how many vultures do you think would have to regurgitate? (laughs) That's a large area. Look, this thing could be like, look, it could have been a freaking. Where where was this at? Kentucky. Kentucky. What do you. It's it's freaking Kentucky. It could be a tornado, man. I think a tornado just ripped up an animal and shoved it, you know, I don't know. 16 miles somewhere else. Could and, be. Yeah. And, you know. You think they would have known? I guess, though, back then, there wasn't like, I mean, you didn't know if there was a tornado happening out of out of sight. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's there's not like nowadays. No, no, no. You know yeah. what's happening they everywhere have, all the time. They didn't have Doppler. Right. They, well, they didn't have phones. They didn't have anything. They didn't nothing. Well, I don't know or, about that. Or 18, whatever. They didn't have phones back then. I don't then, know when they? that stuff was invented. <laughs> I mean, like, who am I? <laughs> does, does anybody oh, really Alexander know? Graham Bell yeah. did something in the 1800s. I'll tell you that. You know what it was? Yeah. Monkey. Aliens. A- yeah. That's the only they, logical answer. Yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. They're always abducting those cows anyway. Just what, spit them back out. What if it's, uh, <laughs> no, right? This one ain't no good. So, <laughs> so you know, like these airplanes that fly over and they like had the chemtrails and whatever, but the airplanes actually dump, they dump stuff when they're, when they're flying over, right? Oh, yeah. Urine. So, what if it's some kind of like alien ship? Just that was their. There was her bio waste. They're just like dumping it. Man, it's yeah. fine. These primitive in the alien these, southwest were just dumping their lavatories yeah, as they right. flew over. Yeah, these primitive species. They they'll eat anything, right? They're animals, and I mean. we proved them right. Exactly. Yeah. Like, did they barbecue the meat? That's what I want to know. Uh, no, they, they had to they cook it somehow. Away? They got they tired of probing. They're like, ah, oh, okay, well, I'm done. <laughs> just dump them. I don't know. That's weird. Well, though. Thank mm. you for bringing that one to our yeah, attention, that's James. Fantastic. That yeah, was a good one, and it's a perfect segue to lead into. All right, everybody, welcome into the show. We thank you for tuning in and joining us. We have a a special interview planned for you guys coming up here in a short few minutes. Uh, We have Thyron Matthews from the huge hit show from Netflix, Barbecue Showdown. That's right. And it, it, well, it's not a spoiler. He's not just from the show, right? He he won the show. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Maybe this is a spoiler if you haven't watched it yet, but if you... 
Does it matter? If you listen to this show, you probably already watched it. It's if fine. you didn't, then that's your fault. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's 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 super cool to have the guy on. Uh, obviously, they tape this stuff. I'm not sure how far in, in advance or whatever else, but the guy won. I mean, he competed. He's on television. Mm-hmm. It's 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 pretty. I don't cool. remember where yeah. was it filmed though. What state was it filmed in? It's somewhere in the I south, remember. I think. Yeah, it's, it was like yeah. I'm yeah, thinking I don't like remember either. Carolinas, Kentucky, yeah. somewhere around there. Probably. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a fun show. It, it's I, something that me and my wife, I think, we binged in like one day. Um, wow. it, yeah, yeah it, it was super entertaining. It's one of those we've discussed before. We had Tina Cannon on um, the first mm-hmm. year, uh, and she won it. And we, it's a fun competition because. You really get to learn a lot of like the little barbecue tools and the, the different cooking methods and and also you get the the behind the scenes the camaraderie that these people have with each other w- whether it's Thyron and 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 some of the other contestants uh, you can you could definitely tell that there was there was love between everybody uh, there was a little bit of a tension between a couple of characters I think it was Michelle and and uh, another lady that was on there um, oh yeah but uh, for like, the most like part, in what way though. Like straight up tension. They like, were there straight up. Didn't like each other. They were straight I think up. they worked it out though. They, they worked it out. They're yeah. straight up beefing over. I think yeah. it was the the they're serving holiday uh, sweet meals. potatoes. Like one wanted the brown sugar, one wanted something and else. And they or were something. collabing this this mm. this family yeah. feast that they were it. presenting to the the judges, and they they each had their own personal take on right. what their Makes family feast would be. So they they had to work a few things out and. Uh, they got it worked out towards the end, but uh, it, it's a fun show. Everybody just gets together and supports each other. Um, I'm trying to rip that. Joey Victorian, I think he's a Houston boy that he was on mm-hmm. there. He was he was there. Uh, uh, he lasted up into there towards the end or whatever. Yeah. But um, that's cool. Just just an awesome show. I and I, I I think there's gonna be more of them. So and I think Jan's mentioned a couple times like, man, let me, where do I throw my audience? I just to gotta it? get in, <laughs> dude. I just gotta get in. I don't know. Well, like, they they just announced. I don't remember where I saw this. I think I think maybe our buddy Kel Phelps posted something about it. They're doing auditions now, so okay. Uh, if I can find that, I'll I'll put that down in our okay. in our so, news segment down below. I'll put a link for you guys to try to apply for that. But I I, I, I need to run some clips off this podcast, mm-hmm. and then I need you guys to really help me. Jan's greatest put, hits. Put together yeah. a, a a video mm-hmm. uh, to. I mean, honestly, we can do this, guys. No, I just like, like I just like keep saying we. I like it. No, no, it's 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 Jan going there. None of us. It's just Jan. No, going. no, no. Right. I'll audition. <laughs> it's fine. But w- but honestly, the show that I would like to do would be like team versus team versus team, but a small a smaller team cook off. Like kind of how like what was the original? Yeah. Uh, where, where, they, they, where you could bring like two or three people with you, or four people, right? This is your crew. Yeah, and, that was the old school barbecue. Yeah. Barbecue pitmasters. Yeah. Yeah, they would yeah, do like true. teams. So let's bring that back. Yeah. I'm just saying. Okay, we'll just make the show. Today's yeah. episode is all about Thyron and not Jan. So right. <laughs> okay. we will plan that wow. next Sorry. episode. <laughs> Sorry, Jan. Yeah. You're out. But, <laughs> John, what uh, what barbecue news do we have today? We do have a little bit of barbecue news. Uh, let's see what we got. The uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to run this one into the ground until, until that weekend is over. The MPBQA Conference, San Antonio, January 31st through February 3rd, 2024. We will be there. Links below. Get signed up. Uh, Next, uh, Operation Barbecue Relief. They are uh, in Hawaii. Yep. Uh, And this is is the 30,000 free barbecue meals. Uh, This isn't just, yeah, this isn't just us, like, being like, hey, they're great. Like, donate to them because they're doing a good thing. There's going to be a link below where you guys can uh, help out Operation Barbecue Relief and help out your fellow Americans over there in Hawaii because they need yeah. it right now. They do need it. And, and you know what? But they're out there cooking. They're barbecuing. They have – they bring so much equipment, so much stuff. I mean, but – It's huge. They're literally just help their, out there to help. That's it. Just helping people. That's that's their mission. I haven't been so. paying too much attention to the news, but did Florida get hit by a hurricane pretty bad? I know I did there see some, some storms yeah. there. I don't yeah, know if it's yeah. like to the level where they need to go out there too. They might be. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm looked, sure they will. It looked pretty okay. bad. I know because uh, I think – Hell, MBBQA was mentioning that they had like lost power and stuff. And really, just announced okay. that they were doing I need good. To, so yeah. I'll text him or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, say, he says he's good. He gave a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. text him anyway. Oh, that's fine. You, <laughs> that's don't, have, you don't need to. I, I I've already talked to him. You're I'm good. sure you did. You're fine. I'm sure hey, you just did. shoot me his number real <laughs> okay. quick and how we don't get to see that the grabbing okay. a brisket Rolodex. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. Any right. other news? Yeah. That's, uh, that's okay. Exactly speaking of Kale, Barbecue News Magazine, their their newest edition of their magazine dropped. Drops tomorrow, which if you're listening to this was like three days ago. 
you guys don't get the Barbecue News magazine, you should. It's it's awesome. And then uh, the well, last, more, yeah, but let's. I, 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 I get that, right? But if you're not getting it, like it, there's something wrong with you. But this is this is something that's been out for like how long? Like ever, forever, forever. This, this has been a, a, a printed. It, it was they self printed at one point, or they had a printing place, or or whatever, right? So th- this is. I know it's. I, I, I get it. I, it's it's 2023. I'm just saying this thing's well, been yeah, out for a it's long. It's printed, but you can also time. just do a ver, uh, digital, virtual digital, digital copy, digital copy, of, digital copy yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's but, what I usually do. But this is this is like history, man. I mean, mm-hmm. each each episode is being, uh, or, or or each each week when it comes out or whatever it is, it's it's uh it, it's laminated in, in in history. Like yeah. they, they they have a they chronologically uh, categorized all of these, and they they. This this is go it goes into bar it's gonna go into the barbecue hall of fame oh really sure. yeah. really and truthfully right all yeah. the articles you the, the recipes the right. the reviews of the products and the people and you learn about you know all kinds of shit in there it's really it's a great magazine I read it great writers I read it on the toilet monthly so yeah there's uh, great it's fantastic there's great writers yeah there is actually I was thinking about maybe like. Tell Kel I should write some articles or something. I can I, t- I can totally write a bunch of like articles. Nope. Yeah. You're not, can't use, not you can't Kel. use what's his face. There's I can no. write about twenty articles in about thirty seconds. We're not <laughs> using <laughs> AI, dude. Exactly. <laughs> You're not using AI. Be okay. creative. The last thing I got Kel was telling me about, and he was pretty excited about this, so I thought I yeah, I'll share this. Uh, and I think our buddy Raul over here has a picture he can show us. There's a new thermometer uh, on the market, Maverick Dynamo uh, Dynamo Temp Instant Read Thermometer. And he's gonna put it up there for us. It uh, it doesn't require any batteries, and you never have to charge it. Is this one of those shake ones? I don't I don't think you shake it. I think it's like uh, you know, like the old school wind up flashlights. Oh, yeah. But you, I don't think you wind it. I think all you do is when you open up the probe, it winds up whatever is in there. Oh wow! And it yeah. says it keeps a charge for about four minutes. So you never have to charge it. You never have to change the batteries. And I guess it's an instant read. So I don't know. I don't know if it's as fast as say a, a, a Thermo Pro or whatever, but. Pretty cool. He was excited about it. I was like, yeah, I'm going to share that because it's cool. Get your hands on that's that. Try it out. Cool. Check it out. Yeah. So when the uh, uh, when the, the infrastructure shuts down, uh, <laughs> you still get those. You can still hunt your, your, <laughs> your food and you can cook them to a proper temperature. And, and not, not to just really quick, I watched that Netflix series alone and it's where they go in it's the a wilderness. Good show. Yeah. It's a really good show. Yeah, I like that. But a lot of people. Get sick. What's the uh, what's the Netflix alone? They can't cook their food to a certain uh, yeah. temperature, yeah. and and they can't, yeah, I guess, salmonella? wash their hands. Oh yeah, bad. Like, oh, literally that's... just like throwing up. Hey, why don't you cook diarrhea it to... just all the mm. time hey. until they check out? They're like, done. Right, I'm done. Hey, winning question. Just overcook it. What is the deal? Right. Yeah. Or they're just starving. They the show no is pretty good. If you haven't watched that, uh, they have no fire. Yeah, that's some it of it's that. Some of it's they don't have fire. Some of it's they don't know how to cook. They don't know how to some hunt. They know how to fish. They don't wash your yeah. hands. How are you going to yeah. go out and, and live on the land when you don't know how to cook, hunt, oh. or fish? Some of them are like... It makes for good TV, Jan. It's yeah. true. And some of them are like really good at one aspect, but really bad at the other. Like They know how to build the shelter. Like They build this cabin out yeah. of nothing. You're like, oh my God. Then they can't catch a fish to save their lives. Or yeah. vice versa. They can catch all the food, but they're freezing their asses off because they don't know how to build a, a proper shelter. Yeah. This guy, this pretty this cool guy uh, got uh, he got fucked up over a beaver. Like, he caught, <laughs> caught, he caught a fucking beaver, <laughs> and he ate it, and then, then he scooped up all the fat off of it, <laughs> and then he rendered the fat, and he's like, there's so much protein in this in his fat. Oh, he died. <laughs> he died. <laughs> that dude's, he that had dude to check out. He's like, emergency, I need help now. Yeah. Yeah. Should you go flare? And they're like, we'll see you in 72 hours. <laughs> and when he yeah. just died on the side of some mountain. <laughs> dude, uh, dude, not good. Not not to plug somebody else, but our buddies over there from the middle, they are huge fans of that show. And they had, I think it was Nate Weber, one of the guys from that show, okay. on their podcast. So oh, that's if badass. you do like that show, go go check out From the Middle. Yeah. Anyways, that's all I got from the uh, Hot Off the Grill Barbecue News. You don't have to do that. I don't have to do it. He'll nope. do it. He'll no. do it. I feel like I'm supposed to do it. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> Thanks, Raul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not good. Mm. Well, I think we have a couple minutes. We can pay the bills, uh, hear a word from our sponsors, and then we're going to we're gonna bring the guest on up shortly. Absolutely. You know, smoking meats isn't just cooking. It's an art form. The aroma, those deep flavors, the patience, it's a whole experience. And behind every great artist, there's the right set of tools. If you're aiming to build your own barbecue pit or dreaming of a custom design tailored just for you, SmokerBuilder.com has your back. Led by Frank Cox, their expertise is unmatched. Offering blueprints, kits, and insights, they turn every barbecue dream into a flavorful reality. Imagine your backyard, the center of attention, and at the heart of it, a smoker that's uniquely yours. 
It's more than just equipment. It's about crafting those unforgettable moments. And with the guidance of Frank and his team, you're setting the stage for magic. So whether you're a seasoned pit master or taking your first steps into the smoky world, head over to smokerbuilder.com, fill up your carts, and be sure to use the promo code GRABTHEBRISKET in all caps to receive your 10% discount. Smoke on. Threw down some ribs last night. Use the chicks that smoke spicy rub. Mind blown. Dude, that, that's what I'm saying. Like the chicks that smoke spicy barbecue all purpose rub. Dude, it, it is a game changer for sure. Yeah, if you folks have not given it a shot, you need to. Honestly, your barbecue will thank you. Chicks that smoke, it's at sucklebusters.com. Hey, listeners, ever been at an event or business gathering and noticed that one thing just stands out? A simple item, but with a touch of personalization. Bro, I know exactly what you're talking about. Coolynation.com, it's all about making an impression. Custom design coolies that aren't just about keeping your drink cold. They're making a statement. Exactly. And for businesses out there, listen up. Whether it's in a corporate event or your product launch or you're promoting your own brand, these custom coolies can be your next big marketing win. Imagine your logo or brand message right there in the hands of potential clients, partners, and customers. It's subtle yet impactful. The quality and design of flexibility they offer top tier it's not just a promotional item it's an experience so for everyone looking to make their mark whether it's in business or just adding a personal touch dive into coolynation.com elevate your brand elevate your events with Cooley nation every sip is more than just refreshment it's recognition make it count so head over to coolynation.com forward slash brisket and get your hook up Hi, I'm Tina Jaramillo. And I'm Hillary Doherty. And we host the Muck Podcast, where we discuss the dark and sometimes weird true stories in American politics. Hey, Tina, did you know that Elvis crashed the Nixon White House for the sole purpose of getting a DEA badge and it worked? What? <laughs> or how a gun control advocate senator out of California engaged in gun trafficking with notorious gang leader Shrimp Boy? <laughs> Shrimp Boy, I remember him. Okay, so you know we cover all of that and more from Malady. Madness, mischief, and murder in U.S. politics. And we also host a bi weekly interview segment called Lil Muck. We interview politicians, journalists, activists, and others who share their experiences in politics. Find the Muck Podcast wherever you listen to podcasts and check us out on social media at the Muck Podcast. Hey guys, Frank Cox here. I'm from smokerbuilder.com, and this is Frank Knows What's Wrong With It. So today's topic I want to talk about is my food tastes too smoky, right? So this is a complaint that you'll get from people that aren't really cooking barbecue, but they they eat barbecue and they're like, it's over smoked. They don't really understand where that comes from. So let's talk a little bit about combustion. And combustion, as you all know, is like the fire triangle. Beep, beep, like that. I don't know if they got graphics here to do that or not, if you're looking at the video. But uh, anyway, combustion is, you know, we got fuel, we got oxygen and we got spark and we got to get that fire triangle right so that we have proper combustion. And in barbecue, proper combustion is going to be like a thin blue smoke. If you have like a white smoke or a black smoke or a gray, anything but thin wispy blue smoke coming out of your firebox or out of your smokestack, I'm sorry, then your fire is burning too rich. It's too dirty. In other words, you don't have enough oxygen you have something wrong with the wood that you're using. The draw on your pit is wrong. A lot of times this can be caused by people soaking their wood. So what will happen is, is before the wood will actually completely catch on fire, we have to heat that wood up to the point of combustion. That's somewhere around 160 or so degrees, according to what I remember from eighth grade science. So once that wood gets up to that temperature, now we can start to uh, combust. And what happens is, is it starts to smolder at that point. It doesn't light on fire at that point. Then it continues to heat. Well, if there's water vapor or excess moisture inside the wood, first of all, we have to boil all that water off into a complete vapor state first, then the wood can catch on fire. Now, what you'll see is in some cases with wood that you haven't had seasoning long enough, when you like, let's say you got a coal bed going in your pit and you stick this wood in there and the wood starts to heat up, what you'll look at is at the end of that chunk of wood, you'll see some foam boiling out the end of the grain of the wood. And that means that you're, you're trying to boil out and vaporize all that water 
or the moisture from that wood. Some of it could be sap and things like that as well. That's one thing that leads to improper combustion. Another thing is, is just that when you shut this, the firebox door, the air inlet or the throat opening, which goes from the firebox to the cook chamber or even the stack could be improperly sized. If that's the case, then you're gonna choke the flow of air. So you're not gonna get enough air through that firebox to not only completely combust the fire, but to carry the heat into the cook chamber where it belongs. Anyway, I hope that helps somebody. Send your questions in be, via the Brisket Boys helpline here. And I uh, really appreciate you. Have a great day. That's great. Ah, I love Frank. Frank man. Dude, it's a wealth of knowledge. I know. Right there. Yeah, I and know. if you guys do have hey questions. Hey, guys, Frank. Oh, sorry about that. You're good. If you guys have questions for uh, for Frank, like I said, just just call in. 834-829-2299. Yep. Four three four four three four eight two nine two two nine. I 2, messed 9, it up already. Yeah, it's fine. It's down below. Just you messed scroll it up already. on down there. <laughs> yeah. Click that uh, yeah. whatever. Just you know what the number is, or email us info at grabbingabrisket dot com, or grabthebrisket dot com. Yeah. That's the website. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Either way, it all happens. Yeah. <laughs> Message us somewhere. Good lord. Uh, yeah, but Frank has a. He's got a bunch of videos lined up, and he he wants questions from the listeners. If you guys have questions, it doesn't. It could be about. Yeah. Really anything barbecue related because the dude's a wealth of knowledge. Does it have to be yeah. barbecue related? You know, if it's not barbecue related, that would be fun too. So <laughs> if you have yeah, a so, question I mean, about football, football draft picks, so, maybe? So, no, no. But, but, but he has. Ask a Jan. It's, it's, not just, it's not just barbecue or whatever else, but it's also commercial cooking, commercial mm -hmm. kitchens. Uh, it's like he, he's got. Starting a business. He's got 20 yes. something years in, 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 in the field of, um, well, not refrigeration. just refrigeration. Yeah. I mean, he's. Basically an engineer. I mean, this guy's spent his whole... Well, that's why they call him the barbecue engineer. I know. I'm sorry, Matt. You, you should have known this already. I was just imagining yeah. us uh, fielding refrigeration questions on air. <laughs> so <laughs> it wouldn't be for us. So, <laughs> so actually, yes. Uh, there, there, there actually could you be. You ask. Yeah, oh, it's fine. I'm sure you'd answer. Yeah. So yeah. He, he actually put out a whole thing about it. He, he put out a whole dossier of, like, what his background is mm -hmm. and everything else. That was so in the last episode. It was, yeah. Sorry, man, you didn't listen to it. You really should I was there whenever we had him on, so I remember oh, right. talking about all of it. it is. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah. What's up, boy? What's up, guys? What's that hey. up to, man? Man, hey. we're just, you know, we're out here talking barbecue, trying to uh, relax and uh, have a, a few cold ones, man. Oh, that's what's going on. That's what's going on. <laughs> yes, sir. You know, uh, you know how barbecue, barbecue never ends. I'm, I'm just put, uh, I'm just finishing up a little event right about now. I got my concession trailer going and uh, come on, just, just finishing up a little event. Just you know, we just sold out, so that's pretty good. Hell yeah, that's awesome, brother. Dude, yeah, you, you want to give us a little walk around the trailer to sh show us what you got? Okay, so this is my uh, revert, uh, my rotisserie smoker. Okay. Right here, you can put uh, Cindy Slams of Ribs on it. Ooh, oh, yeah. Holy moly. Damn, oh, look uh, at that thing. So right here. Damn, look at this. I would say get the get that camera down in there. Oh, yeah. See. Oh, yeah. They got a propane assist. Yes, sir. It looks clean. Oh, yes. 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 We keep it clean. Man, oh, man. We keep it clean. So, so what would y'all all cook tonight? What would which, which, y'all put on there? Uh, tonight we did, uh, we did, we had, uh, 50 pork butts. We had, uh, smash burgers. We did, uh, we did about 200 smash burgers a night. We sold probably about 200 pounds of pork butt. We got we got uh more pork butt to sell tomorrow. We got to go out tomorrow. Damn. And uh, we did sausages. We sold out of sausages. And uh, let me cut this right there. You go. Okay. Sorry, we sold out. Oh, come on. I'm oh sorry. <laughs> Hey. Thank you, Nicole. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, so, baby, they need to record. They need to unplug the 50 amp, honey. Okay. 
<laughs> man, you hustling over there. Come on. Man. They want they, they want to unplug the 50 amp guys. I'm finna go send the truck. But okay. this is our concession trailer right here. We have a concession trailer is 40 foot long, Oof. eight by eight and a half feet long. We pull it with our dually truck right here. Damn. Things bigger than my house. I know it. <laughs> yeah. Know it. Is this a private event or are you guys open to the public? Open to the public. So where are you at if people are listening and they want to go check you out sometime? Uh, I'm at I'm in West Union, Iowa at the farmer's market. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Help West Union, Iowa at the farmer's market. We go into Waterloo tomorrow. We'll be Waterloo, Iowa tomorrow. Waterloo, Iowa. We got 180 slabs of ribs in Waterloo tomorrow. We're cooking 180 slabs of ribs. We'll be live on Facebook. We'll be live on YouTube tomorrow okay. with 180 slabs of ribs. Damn. Damn. Yeah. We call it Rib Fest. Rib <laughs> Fest. <laughs> oh, man. You know, you I kind of think... Yes. He's Go out. ahead. Do you have anything left out there? You sell out of everything. Oh, we sell everything. We have some uh, pulled pork left over, but but the smash burgers are gone. Our sausages are gone. Everything gone but the pulled pork. And we got that. We 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 didn't mean to sell. We didn't go into the rest. We just got the rest for tomorrow, and then we'll be sold out for the weekend. That's, That's awesome. Nice. That's fantastic. That's yeah. awesome. And you know. The sauces we use, you can get at www.thyronmatthews.com. www.thyronmatthews.com. Come nice. on, man. Yeah, we'll put a link down below for you. Yeah, 100%. I so appreciate it, guys. You get all yeah, the sure. sauces and rubs and things of that nature. So how crazy has it been for you since you uh, since you went and whooped everybody's ass on that TV show? <laughs> oh, man. I ain't whooped no ass. I got Come on. You whooped a little ass. Come on, man. There's a Don't little lie. bit of ass whooping going Don't on. Lie. <laughs> Come on. Hey, so... Man, it's been crazy. I mean, out of this world, like nonstop phone calls, nonstop, like just going. You know, I got a full time job working at the sheriff's office, yes, and sir. we're doing three to four events a week and selling out every single event. I mean, it's crazy. You know, kissing babies and yeah, baby. pictures, you know, you know, keep yeah. a president. <laughs> ah, let's go. <laughs> Hey, hey, like I say, TNT Barbecue trying to make barbecue great again. (laughs) Cheers, brother. Cheers. Cheers. Love it. That's awesome. That's great. That's great. So honestly, I mean, yeah, so you, 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 you win. I I know there's been a kind of a couple of months, right? Since y'all showed or since y'all aired or I'm sorry, since since y'all taped it, right? That's been longer than that since they taped it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So so how how long ago was it that that the episode actually finished? Oh. We finished May 26th of this year. Okay. Damn. It was filmed back in February of 2022. Okay. Damn. Yeah. Wow. That's a while ago. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like a year later. Yeah. Wow. Damn. I didn't know. realize yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am the secret keeper. Yeah. I was going to say, did you have to keep yeah. the secret that you, you won that whole time? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's got to be tough, that, man. That like, it is tough. Like, I mean, honestly, I know you kind of told some people, but like, <laughs> come on. Like, what was that like trying to keep it together? Hey, man, it was crazy, you know, because it's like, you know, uh, you know, barbecue is a thing of you pay the same for good barbecue, you pay for bad barbecue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you just got and, took and, and, and if you like, have the awards to go with it, it kind of, you know, not saying you can raise your prices, but it's it you can you can sell a smash burger for fifteen bucks because they're like, hey, this is coming from a champ. That's right. Well, you mm-hmm. cook the same smash burger, whether you had a recognition or not, they would be like, I ain't paying fifteen dollars for a smash burger. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I pay eight dollars. But, but now they with recognition with that, they'll pay the fifteen dollars for a double smash burger with my famous baked beans and potato salad and the TNT barbecue sauce on it. Well, that's a deal. <laughs> first of all, that's a deal. That's a steal. You're giving it away. Uh, but you know what? Hard work pays off. And that's what that means. Yeah. Come on. Yes. I don't know, you keep selling out. It sounds like it's going to be a $20 smash burger pretty Hell soon. Yeah. Right. Right. Really? <laughs> hey man, it, 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 it takes a team, you yeah. know, without my wife, man, this, this, none of this would be possible. And I mean that, you know, I said the interface and behind her back. My wife cannot stand barbecue. 
Yeah. She's not a barbecue fan. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. But, sick of but she loves my draw. She loves my black ass. There it is. <laughs> there it is. That's, hey, that's all that matters. That's Amen. all that matters. Come on. So, so she's a fan of me. So, uh, yeah. you know, you know, you know, it's, it's just been an amazing journey, guys. I tell you what, man. It, that well, that is fantastic, uh, Tyron. Hey, can we can we can we go back to not the beginning, beginning, even before the show? Can can we go back into where you kind of got started into cooking barbecue, and maybe possibly the inspirations in your life that 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 got you on that barbecue journey to to put you in a place where you are currently? Wow, that's an amazing question. First of all, thank you for asking that question. So. To me, it's all about my family heritage. You know, growing up in a small rural town, we, we did a lot of, uh, hold on one second. Growing up in a small rural town, we, we, did a, um, we did a lot of cooking and uh, everybody had a smoker. Everybody growing up had a smoker. And when you had to, uh, when you had to smoke, you had to brag about it. It was no, oh, yeah. uh, it, it, it was no, uh, you know, if, if you barbecue suck in this small town I grew up in, Royal Florida, you knew about it because people wouldn't come to your barbecue. You have, <laughs> <laughs> That's it, right? <laughs> you have a yard full of smokers and nobody there. Yep. You're like, I ain't get to that guy house. <laughs> so, um, just knowing how my mom and father and my grandparents, how they, cooked and everybody showed up when they cooked people showed up yep so that was the story right there yeah and you know when i was in college up here from in iowa i didn't have a lot of money to go back home on the holidays so i used to stay around and a lot of us california guys florida guys and my cuban brothers and my colombian brothers we used to stay around and just make Iowa home because, you know, they played baseball. I played football. Yeah. And, and um, we used to cook. And I and, and they cooked a little different than what I cooked because we grilled a lot. But they grilled and I smoked. So I started cooking. And, and they used to always compliment me. Man, you cook the best ribs. You cook the best chicken. And, and you know, you just think people saying that. Yep. But um, fast forward, I met my wife joined the church and the church had a uh, fundraiser. I said, I cooked the chicken and ribs. We sold out in an hour <laughs> and everybody kept asking me to do these fundraisers. And uh, a guy just gave me the grill. My first grill was a gift. He gave it to me, pulled behind a truck, grill smoker, 350 gallon, gave it to me. Wow. Damn, and, that's you awesome. know, it, it was labor intensive though. Cause it was one of those grills. You had to pull the grate out put the charcoal down in there mm -hmm. put the oh, I know. Logs. you know it was like it was it was one of those labor intensive grills but uh make a long story short but it was free and uh i started by just helping people doing fundraisers anybody got cancer in the community i was there cooking for them you know anybody that was having any kind of house fires or anything like that i was there for them in the community and um uh, I had a wedding, and this was back in 07, and a wedding uh, was free. It was just for a person that knew a person. Yep. And uh, I met Bridezilla. Oh, <laughs> and, man. And I man. say, never again, if I going to cook, if, I, if I'm going to cook for somebody, I'm going to get reimbursed. Like, like yeah. she just changed the whole projected of me giving you know it, it was just like one of those things like i ain't giving nobody nothing no more yeah. <laughs> she, hey. it, was, it was a horrific experience you know and she was on one you know you got to cut this meat in front of my guests you have to do this you have to do that you know i was like i'm not getting paid for this you know no, it was this just, is free right <laughs> yes it, you know and it was it was just after that you know of course i still do a lot of free things but at the time that was my mindset and, I, I tell you what, real quick. What, without that, that, was that kind of a catalyst for you? Yes, yes. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. It takes 
it, that, it yeah, takes those this. Moments, this, right? this is what you, this is what it takes to push people to go. You know what? I ain't doing that. Come on, I'm in charge. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna start. You know what I mean? So hell, yeah. Yeah. hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So the and 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 and, and just. And also, when I barbecue, it just takes me back to Royal Florida. It takes me back. You know, I lost my dad like eight years ago. But yeah. when that smoke go to firing up, it just brings me back sitting beside him, relaxing. You know, me smelling his cool 50K 100s. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, yeah. us sitting, sitting up under the, uh, you know, up under the pit, up under the oak tree with the pit going. It just It just takes me back to a great place. And Hopefully it does the same for my kids, you know. So, and I started this YouTube channel. I think YouTube is a big part of my barbecue journey because YouTube helped me to try different things and try other things. And it was another callus. Callus. When I started doing YouTube, I tried every method, everything barbecue pit masters tried. I tried. Yeah. Every smoker, every gadget, every darn thing out there, you know, we, I was trying it. Yeah, we tried it all too, man. That's 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 the great thing about uh, YouTube is that it 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 put it out there for everybody to go look. I, I got a hack. I can do this, or you know what I mean. Like yes. now, yeah, now when I'm trying to figure something out, I go to YouTube. You know what I mean? And yes. That's that's the thing. That, that's I I cannot tell you like I. I'm a smarter person because of uh, YouTube. Yes, yes. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Amen. I ice so, machine on my counter yeah. and I had to fix it with YouTube. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So YouTube helped me, and uh, I remember about four years ago, I was, I was, mom was up here for my uh, one of my kids having a Sweet Sixteen party or something like that, and I was cooking, and my mom said, "Boy, what you doing?" And I said, "I'm gonna wrap the ribs." She like. We don't wrap no ribs. Well, you better mop them ribs. You better mop them ribs. I never forget that. Yeah. And I'm like, mop the ribs, mama. You know, that's old school. My daddy mop ribs. You mop ribs. But you too good to not mop ribs. Yeah. And you gotta do it. And, and I start back mopping the ribs. I left the aluminum foil alone on the ribs. And first of all, I saved a lot of money by not wrapping all them darn ribs. Yep. Second of all, <laughs> Second of all, um, it truly made my barbecue taste better. There it is. You know, it it, it, it brought me back, like I said, on the prodigal son of barbecue. I had to come home. I had to try everything and do everything. And when I came back to the mop sauce, man, it kind of it kind of balanced me out. Really, it did. You know, and and and, and that's the truth. Well, you know, because I grew up mopping meat. I grew up mopping meat with a Oh, uh, with a rag hooked to a pedal metal bush, old school, southern style, you know, just country. Yep. And uh, I got away from it. But uh, when I came back, the success started rolling in. There it is. Love that. I know. That's awesome. I know you talked about on the show it being family tradition and whatnot and having granddaddy's super secret mop recipe. Are you going to share that with us here? Oh, um, my God. Yeah. You <laughs> You got, you got to go get you a baby unicorn first, and then I'll tell you what to do, <laughs> right. hey, you what to do with it after you get the baby unicorn hey, just give us, yeah. Just give us a couple of years. Right. No, my first my first thought was, oh, he's he needs to bottle that mop sauce and yeah. start selling it. I know it. Because I want to try it. Yeah. Oh, what you mean, start bottle? It's already bottled. It's already out. Oh, I didn't it's, even know it was already bottled. You got to buy it. Okay, well, it's I'm out. Out. You can buy it www.thyronmatthews.com there, there it is. is scroll down click the link get you some mop sauce i by the time you heard this i already ordered mine so hey that's what i'm talking about put a mop on it baby <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah we got we got to try this that guy. yeah this is great oh my goodness hey guys i'm sorry about the quality of the uh but no it's bring good it back man. on no, oh, we definitely will. We definitely will. 100%. Open invitation. Yeah, one hundred percent. But no, I I like this. This is listen. This is you doing you. You know what I mean. This is this is your day hustling. Yeah, that's exactly right. This is you hey, out doing the grind. I mean, come on. This this is you can't get more realer than this. Let's hey, be honest. With you. Yeah, man. You know, I'm out here, out here smoking, living the dream, and you know, and I don't take this for granted because, you know, um. I just showed up before with three, four hundred pounds of meat, 
and went home because of a a, a, a tornado warning. Yep. Mm. You know, and we don't serve leftover food. You know, me and my wife, we don't do that. We we t- we take it to shelters. So you know, it's a blessing going places and selling out all the time. Yep. You know, it, you know, so it, it, and also it helps me help other people. So, you know, we, we do something in our business called attentional giving. And attentional giving is we give attentionally. We, we, we make it a purpose to give. And, yep. I, you know, so when you come to my trailer and when we say attentionally giving, it's not like just give them a pulled pork sandwich. No, they get whatever they want on the menu. They, I don't care how many kids they got. I don't care how many family members they got. If they want racks of ribs, they want prime ribs. I'm serving prime ribs. They get whatever they get. It's just like they got a pocket full of money. So yep. that's how I look at it, attentional giving. We don't want to give. We want to give with a purpose. We do have our ulterior motive. Our ulterior motive is to make sure you're full, make sure you get treated like the best you could be treated, like you had a pocket full of money. Yep. And that's just what we're about. That Everybody that works with me knows that's what we're about. That's awesome. That yeah. is amazing. Yeah, that's yeah, your core that's value. Good people, sir. Yeah, people. that's your core value. That's awesome. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. Hell, hell yeah. Let, let, let me ask you a question. So <laughs> your first day, your first day on set, you come in, you, you have no idea what to expect, right? Your very first day. And yeah. they, kind, they kind of tell you, they, they, kind of, they kind of run you through what you're going to be doing or kind of a little bit, right? But they don't tell you a lot. What, hey, what, man, what were you thinking? Well... I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I, uh, I popped the screw. Like, like, like the first episode. I thought that it should have been an episode that I should have did really good at it because it's like, it, it was kind of traditional barbecue. Yeah. But I truly just like when I seen them. You know, I was thinking they're gonna be out there with a, a Samsung Galaxy, you know, camera. Man, when I went out there, man, it had cameras everywhere. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know? yeah movie set. So uh, that was my first time in front of that many cameras. So I was like, you know, I was just, I, I, I was stunned. I was just like a deer in headlights. Yep. My mind said, boop. And uh, I thank God for those beef ribs. You know, when I grabbed those beef ribs, that was the only thing that was kind of like, I cooked that with my arms tied behind my back, you know, so I grabbed the beef back ribs and I grabbed some chicken. I grabbed just something that I could cook that I just can do off muscle memory. But I think I, I know I tried to hold back and my mind don't work when I hold back. So I tried to, all right, Thyron, you can't do all these meals. You can't do all this stuff. And when I did that, I psyched myself out. So the first episode, I just, I just laid an egg. Damn. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 And, it, you know, and uh, I, 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 I was nervous. I was scared. It was all the above. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I was nervous for you after that first episode. I was like, oh, man, like this is the barbecue guy. What's going on? And then, of course, you turned it around and just, like I said before, whooped everybody's ass. <laughs> really? <laughs> Let me tell you something, though, man. Them, them guys were monsters. You know, when I walked in there and I seen Logan and Joey V and I saw those guys, man, them guys was intimidating. Them guys and girls was intimidating. Yeah. Mr. Lila, you know, they come from bigger cities. You know, I'm from Iowa. You know, I stood up and say, hey, I, I went to the state fair, you know. Right, right. <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. This whole country, boy, you know, uh, we do what we do and we try to take pride in everything we do, but, you know, uh, this show happened because um, I didn't have a choice but to go there and, and, and do what I did. Because yeah. when I got there, I, I, I made it through the first episode, and I just told myself, I'm just going to fight for now. I'm, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm just going to roll through it and roll with the punches and let the chips fall when they fall. But I got to do it my way. I, you know, I, you know, and and I think that that helped me out a lot because I do a lot of cooking. You know, if you go back and look at my videos for eight, ten years ago, I'm always cooking sixty racks of ribs, eighty racks of ribs, ninety racks of ribs. You know, my YouTube channel. Yep. Uh, uh, you know, so it, it my mind works 
by doing a lot. It don't work by concentrating on one thing. It just it, so I had to really focus on how do I how do my mind work. So I I learned a lot about myself during that competition. That's badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that damn that's badass. Yeah, that's hey, cool, uh, Thyron, uh, talk a little bit about um, it, it, one of my favorite parts about um, this this barbecue competition is that. It, it's competitive, but everybody is is friendly. Everybody has everybody's back, and, and you saw evidence of people helping out other people, knowing that those people had a chance of beating you and kicking you off the competition. Uh, but yet, still, people just helped everybody out. And, and talk a little bit about the the, the friendships that you developed, and, and and some of the relationships, and, and also like. I mean, not to mention Kevin, Kevin Bledsoe and Melissa Cookston, uh, any mentorship or advice that those guys may uh, and gals maybe just uh, like pulled you aside or just like to everybody else like, hey, hey, you know, you got this. Well, first thing first, I'm going to tell you this. It was no acting. It was no acting like what you see is what you get. I mean, it, it was like we clicked. All of us clicked. And. Even though we knew it was a competition, it was one of those things where it's like it was a good thing and a bad thing because I didn't want to go home, but I didn't want to see nobody else go home. Yep. So, so it was it was it was always a sigh and a cry, a sigh of relief and a cry, you know, because you really are get emotional attached to those. Like like, for instance, Joey V was the first guy I met. Man, he's like, uh. A favorite pit master, pit master. You know, if you if you're a pit master, he's your favorite person to be friends with. He's the guy that call up and be like, Joey B, let me come over to the house and chill with you tonight. Yeah. So you know, I mean, he just was that guy, you know. And then uh, we had Joey B and, and, and Logan. Man, he was just a a kickback, uh, hard ass chef that you know kind of remind me of that 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 new school barbecue kind of thing going on. And then you had El Grotto, and then you had the ladies. Miss Delilah, man, she's a monster. So you got, and Michelle, Money Michelle. So you got all those different characters from New York, from Atlanta, from here. And, you know, it, it was just that we jailed, and it was just like, wow, man, these guys are super cool. Yep. And, and um, Melissa and Kevin, man, they said things to you that just pierced good or bad into your soul and made you do different. Like, yep. I remember what Kevin told me, yo, T, man, get your stuff together. You was <laughs> on the bottom. But I, I felt like I went home. Yeah, right? <laughs> That's all it takes. That's all it takes. I got to turn it around. Uh, yeah, it's like, funny too. man, send me home. I mean, no more. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. It, 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 it was things like that that really helped me and then Melissa boosting your confidence like when she told me I, I truly thought I oversmoked my pork loin and she said Thyron you know let me be the judge and, and, and you cook this is a good pork loin right here you know that types of stuff that boosts my confidence not just over here over there but it now I use that to know that I'm doing things right. She's the queen of barbecue for a reason, yep. you know. And uh, and I just thank God for both of them, you know. And uh, and man, it was just a, it was just amazing, you know. It was uh, the only thing I wish I could change about that show. I really wish that we could sit down and eat each other food a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh you yeah. Know, yeah, because a lot of these guys, you know, we were so tired at the end until last thing we wanted to do was eat. You know, most of our time wanted to go to sleep, but, you know, it, it, it that's one thing about the show. The show was very physically exhausting and, and mental exhausting, you know. And uh, I think my job at the sheriff office helped me because, you know, when you don't lock it in, you know, people die. That's right. In my, in my profession. Yep. When you don't lock it in mentally, when you don't have it there, when you don't lock it in and say, it's crunch time, people, your, your mistake of not handcuffing this guy right or patting this guy down 
because you're tired or you you know you're not doing the execution people lose their lives so uh i think that kind of prepares me for the cooking arena and cater that, that i do so it all works into one big circle when it comes to me yes sir yes sir 100 percent, man 100 percent. damn that's awesome that is awesome yeah. so so, so what's 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 next for you right now? I mean, you're you're, you're doing the catering. You've, you've got your sauces up. You've got you've got you got your stuff going. Like, where where do you see this in the next? I don't know, five years. Like, what's what's your plan? Man, okay, my plan is to keep doing collaboration with these different pit masters. Is to sure. grow my brand. Like, you know, instead of like uh, me signing to a brand, I want to sign people to me. Thyron Matthews, www.thyronmatthews.com. My sauce is my rub. I want to send that out there to competitions, have people to sign on to my uh, rubs and sauces and see. Ambassadors. And, and, yes, ambassadors. I, I I want to share the love. I want to share the mop sauce, the legacy, and and, and, and do motivational things, you know, and also uh, do a lot of judging, do a lot of uh, talking, you know, because. I consider myself the American dream and uh, I'll be retired by then from the sheriff office so I can move a lot better. And, and uh, I see myself still cooking with Logan, still cooking with Joey B, cooking with Aguardo, Michelle, all the guys I can see us cooking. And hopefully they bring us back for a clash of the champions kind of thing. Yes, you sir. know, w w where this two, these two run ups, the run up and the champ, Go, uh, team goes against the run up in the champ for second season, third season. Hopefully they have something like that. If not, whatever shows out there, I'm willing to go at those too. So uh, that's where I see myself going. Uh, just being continued catering, continue uh, building a platform for pit masters that come and also creating a legacy for my kids to follow, leaving them something that they can grasp on when I leave this world. I want to just leave my footprint on, on this world for its barbecue and just being a great human being. Well, you know, I yeah. always tell my kids, I want y'all in therapy when I die. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. That's awesome. Uh, well, I, I can tell you right now, you're off to a good start. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Because uh, yeah. I mean, like, it, it's, it's no easy feat. Uh, I know there's probably thousands and thousands and thousands of entries, uh, and and to be selected is is amazing. And then run the gauntlet and uh, and win it all is uh, truly a feat. So uh, congratulations, uh, man! That seriously, I from the bottom of our hearts, like, it was fun watching you uh, through the series, uh, and and then being being crowned as well. So uh, you definitely deserved it. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you. I tell you what, it's an honor being on this show, man. I'm y'all are amazing, amazing people, man. Thank y'all so much. Yes, sir. And you know, uh, one thing about that show though that uh, really caught me off guard was truly, 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 like a lot of that live fire cooking. Like you know, hey man, you give me a a, a, a stick burner, give me a pellet grill, give me a Weber kettle grill. I, I'm ready to to compete. You know, but it, this competition wasn't like that. They threw us a curveball. Yep. So, uh, you know, it, it, they say you can't te teach your old dog new tricks. Well, this old dog sure did some tricks, goddamn. Come on. Come on. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, man. Well, Siren, we appreciate it. We appreciate you coming on with us. We're definitely, like I said, this is an open invitation. Anytime you want to come back on, we're going to get you on again. One more time, tell yeah. the folks where they can find you, where they can find your products. Man, look, first of all, you can find me on Instagram at Thyron Matthews. On Instagram, you can find me on YouTube, Thyron Matthews. And you can definitely find that mop sauce, baby, <laughs> and that grandpa's pecan rub, and that royal gold. I got a mustard sauce, too. You can find it on www.thyronmatthews.com. Cool. Tell me where you from. 
Yes, sir. Yo, let's go. Let's go. It, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Hey, All right, you. Thank you, guys. Hey, man. Thank y'all so much. Y'all be blessed. Yes, sir. Right, you, too. you too. You too. Thank you. Well, hell, I'm never wrapping my ribs again. Oh, dude, I want to try that mop sauce uh, so bad. Yeah. Uh, no, can can somebody place an order? Am I gonna play? I'll yeah, play I can. Play I'm, I'm, I'm gonna chip in though. You're gonna, okay. I'll, I'll buy I'm not. Too. I'm, I not I'm not chipping in. You don't get the taste. I of just for free. I yeah. just want to show up. I want to use it. I just want to chip in. I just want to show up and get the benefits. <laughs> okay. I can, let me try it. Nothing. Let me try it. Dude, uh, it, 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 he's very infectious. He's yeah. definitely. He, he's very um, personable and energetic, and and, and I, I can see why uh, you watch him on the Netflix show, and he, you know. He's a guy you just want to root for. He's like, oh, man, he's like that. He's like my neighbor. He's like my buddy. I, I, I just, I love it. I, I'm glad. He's like us. Got to be a and part of it. He's talking about this. giving back to people and no, like. That's what I'm saying. But, yeah. but he's like us. People that need it. I'm like, oh, there's, that's just like, what barbecue I'm going to message this dude. Be like, hey, you need to come to the MBBQA conference and just like hang out with us. Yeah. Like, yeah. That would be super <laughs> fun. Hang yeah. out and sign some autographs. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, come yeah. On. Try not to sound too desperate, John. Uh, like, no, I won't sound. Maybe I will. I don't know. Maybe I'll sound super desperate. Doesn't matter. John, when do you have a next flight to Ohio? He's in Iowa. Iowa? Yeah. Both so with an eye. Close. Well, they, <laughs> they have it. several flights a year to Iowa, so. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Did you say they both start with an eye? Yeah. Okay. John's just going to pop up. He's like, uh, hey, it's me. He's yeah. like, I'm here. Spray with mace. <laughs> mm. Yeah, exactly. Is this the mop sauce? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah. You're blind. Yeah, what a great guy. Yeah, I, that's awesome. Hey, everybody, run out there. Go go check. If you had not seen it yet, go check out the uh, Netflix show, Barbecue Showdown. I mean, there's mm-hmm. two seasons. Uh, both of them, if you're really into cooking, if you're really into, uh, if you're a chef or if you like the cooking shows, I mean, it is binge worthy, um, uh, both seasons. Um, yeah. and go check it's out like past, uh, episode, episodes, right? grabbing the brisket where we had Tina Cano on and I'm sorry, mm-hmm. I spoiled the, uh, the winner of last year's. Yeah. And if you have not it's seen all right. that, it's already been last year. We can spoil anything we want. Okay. Yeah. Also had Ashley Thompson on. So uh, have you never seen yeah. the movie six yeah. cents? Uh, they were all dead. Okay. I'm, I'm into spoilers. <laughs> I'm just saying, Okay. <laughs> Wow. It's been some, enough time. That's some hateful shit right there. There is. Yeah. But it's yeah. been enough time. What's wrong with you. Yeah. Well, yeah. good luck. <laughs> but, I mean, it's a perfect segue for us to go into the grabbing the brisket. Beer review. I'm not sure how that was a perfect yeah, segment at it all. Wasn't. Like, how is that related? How was it? <laughs> but uh, that's just my se- oh, Okay, I like it. What but do we, got? We, we do have the Silent Blue Whiskey Barrel Age Blueberry Sour. Hey, who with brewed this? Lactose. Uh, 9.8% alcohol by volume. Uh, this one box, it contained two beers, and this mm-hmm. is from Martin House. Martin House? Imagine that. Martin House. I don't House. know. What is that? Uh, what, what, is, what do you mean? What is I've what? never heard of that. What is Martin House? Uh, Martin House is a brewery out of Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, they brew, like, uh, I don't know, the Mad Scientist yes. of Beer. Our that's, favorite that's brewery. What they are. I would say it's our favorite mm-hmm. brewery. It's that's what they are? Yeah. Yeah. See, you got to share some of that, bro. Unofficial, official Beer of the podcast. Oh, sorry. Uh, official, official beer. So uh, about the beer. So, so this these two beers came, came came in this box right here, which is which is kind of awesome. Uh, and jeez, uh, these guys can't figure out how to split a beer. Yeah, well, um, it was like it was like seventy thirty. So so on the back here it says about the beer. So we'd like to meet. Uh, so we'd like you to meet the Silent Blue, a mesmerizing blue aged for four months in a whiskey barrel. So. I think mm. I think we were out last time, not this last time, but the year before. That's what they were doing. They, they were brewing a bunch of these type of beers. We couldn't in, touch in that barrel. Barrels. This is yes. it right here. Yeah, yes. we probably sat on it. This this yeah. time, y'all went back. This thing was there, probably. Probably, you know. So we um, had a great time. Maybe the best event we've ever had as grabbing a brisket. Yeah, sure. I, I wasn't there. I don't know so what was fine. so different about it. There was it. something yeah, I wasn't different. There. There's something, probably, some, yeah. yeah. It was one of those addition by subtraction type things. I think you're so, right, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to get through a little bit of this. I don't read the whole thing because I know last time I made a comment about not having anything, but this one has a lot. You, so don't, have, you don't have to read all that. I, I'm not, but I, I, <laughs> read, I wonder a little bit. Here. So this is a 9.8% alcohol by, by volume. Blueberry sour will transport you into the depths of the deep blue sea. It's enchanting. Blue hue reflects the mysteries of the ocean while the aromas of the ripe blueberries, oak, and subtle sweetness entice your senses. I mean, there's a whole bunch more here. Check out... Um, again, uh, uh, Martin House, and uh, yeah, I can't wait to try this. So, if you like sours that are sour, this it. is sour. Oh, it's truly sour. Yes, yeah, so some of the some of their stronger sours, they are able to offset some of the sourness with like some lactose or some extra alcohol. It's got or lactose, in it. yeah. this one is this one is like sour. It's got everything. 
It's got lactose. I'm saying usually it seems to offset some of that sourness. This is not doing that. Oh, yet. oh, oh! I this get you. I got you. Soury, sour. Okay. I, I anyway. like it. I don't. I, mean, I don't dislike it. I'm just saying this is sour. It didn't, it didn't taste like it's overly sour to me. I don't think so. No. Definitely has a wine vibe to it. Mm. To me. Yeah. It's kind of sour. I, I'm not feeling like I'm transported to the bottom of the ocean when I drink this, but I like it. <laughs> Go stick your head in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, so, uh, one more. It says, historically, most barrel-aged beers you'll find are available in a glass bottle uh, format called a bomber. Uh, mm-hmm. While a bomber might look fancy, it offers very little advantage when compared to cans. Cans are easily mm-hmm. portable, more recyclable, and also block out harmful Light rays. Yeah, this that's is right. why the can. That's why when oh, you get beer that's wow. in a clear bottle or green bottle, it always has that kind of a skunky, skunky? taste to it. It's because it got too much light. Every in there. guy likes nice cans. I'm just saying. Who doesn't? <laughs> Who doesn't? This okay. is a low hanging. Can we just, <laughs> You're better can we just talk about this beer real quick? <laughs> yeah. And every yeah. woman likes. Want to go first, Matt, or you yeah. want me to go first? Well, it's deaf to me. It's the sourness and that blueberry is definitely. Forward. It's there. It's like right there. But then you do kind of get a little bit of that oakiness that they're talking about that from that yeah. barrel. So, I mean, I'm, I really like this beer. I, I you know like I don't really get too much into sours. Like usually I'm like eh whatever take them or leave them. I, th- I think this is great. I really like this. I like his nine point eight percent too. I th- it's a winner. Yeah, it's a winner winner. I, I'm gonna Martin give. House I'm gonna dinner. go ahead and score it right now. Yeah, I'm gonna give it an eight point five. Which for, so for close me, for to me, my score. For me, an 8.5 or a sour is pretty damn That's good. really high. Yeah. It's really high for any beer. Uh, yeah. 8.5. It's yeah. A, you're really close to my score right now. And yeah. if you don't mind, can, if I go next, it's fine. Please do. Is that, is that you're good? asking for permission? Please, just validate me, please. Yeah. Mm. It's 9.8%. I thought he was giving a score. I know. I thought, I thought you were. 6.4% IBUs. OG, 23.6. What's OG again? Is Original OG? Gangster. <laughs> okay. It was 23.6. Uh. Eight nine, eight nine. This is an eight nine. Wow. This is a great you guys are, sour. You guys really like this. I do. I know. I it's do really, really good. Like it. The more I, the more I drink it, the more I like it. Yeah, y'all are nuts. <laughs> maybe you're nuts. <laughs> or maybe I am. I mean, you're always the one who seems to be most off. Have you noticed yeah. that? You know, maybe I've maybe I am. That. No, maybe. We, we, we let James go next. I want to hear James. Yeah, yeah. Right. please, yeah. James. Please. Well, I'm. It's, it's funny that uh, Jan said eight point nine because that was a score that I had in my head. So, uh, twenty. I'm, I'm going eight point nine. I wow, it's not it's sour, but it's not sour, and I don't know if it's the blueberries that, or, or if it's the just the, it maybe the barrel age is helping it in the whiskey so. barrel that kind of helps cut it for me. It's ve- it, it's probably one of my favorite sour beers that I've had. Wow, the, the ones I've had previously have been just way too sour, almost like you're just sucking on a sour patch. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't Forehead. get that at all on this right here. So and it's very drinkable. Uh, I can see myself, you know, uh, drinking. One or two of these. And just being, <laughs> That's it? <laughs> well, yeah, just one or two. Okay. 9.8% okay. is all you need. But yeah. Well, and at the cost for one of these boxes. <laughs> at at 9.8%. That's probably plenty. One or two is probably yeah. plenty. Yeah. That's like a bottle of wine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Who, who picked this up, by the way? I did. Did you get H-E-B? Mm-hmm. There you go. Never let us down. Yeah. It's good. I like it. I don't like it as much as you guys, uh, but I do like go. it. Uh, don't do way that. Way I do that to you. You don't do that to me. Way to muck it up. What you uh, got? Uh, no, I, I like it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go 8.0. It's, this is, it's very you're, good. You're in the eights. Yeah. And, and yeah. And, I, and when I first drank it, the first sip, I was not in So you think it's great? It's I great. do. I do think it's great. You think it's great. I okay. think this is a good. great beer. You said 8.0? It's barely great. 8.0, I know. It's it's really it's cool. When I first drank it, the first sip, I was like, this is like a 6.1. But the more I drink it, the more I like it. Yeah. So. Well, good for you. It is what it is. It might have been a little group think, you know. Yeah. No, I was trying to not listen that. to you guys. Like <laughs> normally I don't, but I was really, really pressing to not listen until it got to James. I always yeah. listen to James. John got persuaded. <laughs> there it is. John got persuaded. <laughs> like usual. Like a kid. <laughs> we'll be here. Grab him in the brisket. Beer, Beer review. You gotta lead us in a little bit better than that next yeah. time. I'm sorry, I was, nope. just, I was trying to cut Jan off. I nope. was trying to get that. It was over fine. Right. I, I actually cut you off by not talking and letting you sing your horrible melody. Hey, I melody. Said fantastically. <laughs> hey, I'm yeah. like Kelly Clarkson. Hey, over next here. time, I'll just tap everybody, and you'll be the only one singing. <laughs> no right. one will listen to you, Jan. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, did you guys do any cooking this weekend? Is this on the show? Okay, I mean, if okay, it is, it or it isn't. Okay. Um, uh, did I? I was well, with I, you this weekend. What did we cook? We cooked something. 
when we were not building a barrel. Oh, that's right. We came over to build that barrel. Yeah. yeah. That, well, we did the frog. Oh, that chicken. Oh, we did a frog chicken. chicken. Yes. The frog chicken. Yeah, yes. we didn't get in discussing. Yeah, we didn't that. at all. Uh, I, I can tell you my first initial reaction. It, lo- it looks cool doing the frog chicken. And then mm-hmm. if anybody's listening here, check out the uh, the social medias. We posted a couple of pictures. And, and I have some videos that I need to put together. The, the And I will put it on I t- did put TikTok some pictures or out. Instagram. It'll give you an idea. But it, it, it's basically you're, you're cutting a chicken in the way that it looks like a frog. Right. Un- unfold right. it, yeah. like yeah, uh, yeah. It's kind of hard to describe without. You just got to see it. Yeah, you're. C- yeah, I go to our Instagram, to, you'll see yeah. it. Go to Correct. our yeah. Yeah, it, we got the idea. It was all over social media. I think Alfergoni was the first mm-hmm. one that kind of introduced that to the, the world, and then everybody uh, went ham over it, so to speak. And then uh, we were like, "Oh, that's cool," but we never did it. So this yeah. past weekend, we we I was, were putting together the uh, Smoker Builder um, dot com barrel. Mm-hmm. We were like, okay, let, let's go ahead and do one of these things. Let's try it out. So we, we did it. it. It came out good. The only caveat is in, whether it's the way we cooked it or the way it just cooks in general, the dark meat, the thigh meat, it just cooks quicker. Oh. Yeah. And the breast meat takes a little bit longer. So uh, by the time we got the breast meat to where it was just perfect, the the legs and the thigh meat was just like nuked. It was like 190 yeah, yeah. I think you. Plus. Yeah. I think you definitely got to. You gotta figure out a way to. What piece did you give me? Because I had some dark. You meat. You had dark meat. It no, was, it was still. It was, good. it was still good. The flavor was yeah. still good. The, the skin was like perfect, yeah, right? The skin on the whole thing was like the crispiest chicken skin I ever yeah, had in my was, life. Yeah, but yeah, I think you could. And with Weber, it's harder. But if you rotate, on yeah, rotate exactly. I was gonna say, put that breast meat towards the towards the heat source where we had it kind of parallel to it. I yeah. guess you'd say. But I think but, that what we did, and nobody else does, and I'm not saying we're innovators in doing this whole um, frog chicken, but. We did cut a couple of limes and we stuck it up under the breast of the the, the skin where the breast was. <laughs> it looked to cool. Make it look like eyeballs. <laughs> I was like, uh, "There we go." Uh, yes. What did What did you think of the frog chicken, Jan? I, I loved it. Uh, I thought it was very unique. Um, I, I thought uh, I thought our neighbors got a kick out of it, and uh, yeah, they did come over. They did, yeah. And I I thought it was genius. Yeah. And it, this is this is uh, who's the one that taught us how to do this? Uh, Alfred Goni. Alfred Goni. Yeah, Alfred Goni. So. Yeah, very so badass. More videos to come with that. Uh, we won't mm-hmm. get too much into it. I, I know we got the barbecue win slash fail coming right up. Um, uh, definitely check out the social media channels uh, to see that uh, chicken frog. Yeah, we just yeah. got a message on was it Twitter or not Twitter? Sorry, now X. And somebody was saying like, "You guys have a website?" <laughs> it was yeah, like yeah. somebody was that like, was "You have a website?" That was our boy, that dude, barbecue. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's nice. like, yep. Grabthebrisket.com. Yeah. We sure do. Yes. Uh, check go us to, out. Go to grabthebrisket.com or check out any of our other social medias at Grab them in a Brisket. Or, as we always say, call into our, our hotline and leave us a message with your win or fail or questions for Frank, 434-829-2299. But speaking of wins and fails. And, and tell people what they get if we select their win or fail. Oh, well, it's not what you do. Entry. Yeah. Well, you're going to be entered into our end of the week, end of the year a uh, huge giveaway, which is going to be really badass. But uh, weekly, we are also giving away something. But we're gonna we're gonna jingle into that after we play our our weekly winner. Yeah. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Fuss with Fuss and Family Barbecue. Last month, we did a large family camping trip up in Montana, and we uh, had a pretty fun time uh, riding four wheelers and dirt bikes and quads and everything. Uh, each family was slated to cook meals for the entire camp uh, one at a time. Uh, we had about 20 people, maybe 30 people, depending on who all was there. It's easier to cook for a whole crowd versus a small family. Naturally, I brought my two Rectech travel smokers and my Lion Energy solar battery system. My brother-in-law brought his griddles. We had um, a three-burner standard camp stove, camp stove available as well. Uh, all in all, I'd say it was a pretty good success. Everybody had awesomely cooked meals. Uh, For our meals, we did pulled pork sandwiches, pizza, spaghetti one night with smoked sauce, uh, breakfast crunch wraps, breakfast burritos, um, and everything worked out perfectly. All in all, I'd say a 10 out of 10, I'd recommend that we have everybody cook like this when you're doing large camping uh, meals. Uh, Fantastic. Obviously, if you don't want to eat, you can. Um, But I hope you all have a fun and fantastic week. Oh, yeah. Jan's a bitch. And y'all choose up the hard way. 
Well, you had me. You had me until you did all of that. You're so smiley until look, that. Look, let me tell you, man. Look, I, I could tell he was leading up to something because he got a little excited. Yeah. And I was like, hey, so, bro. Look. That's our boy Eric Fusselman, the Fussel Family Barbecue, or he goes yeah. by Fuss. Fuss uh, yeah. Yeah. Come on, Fuss. He should, that he should at least get you like 10 extra entries in the giveaway. Exactly. Come on, yeah. Fuss. He had look. a little frog wanna, in his pocket. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I, I he, hope he, he just wins just the whole thing. Just hey, waiting to pull Fuss. Oh, fuss, fuss, good fuss. Lord. Look, you, you're like a kid in a candy store. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you sped up. You, you just couldn't wait to get it out, right? Oh I listen. Gosh, I was so uh, good. I, hey. I'm, I'm, I'm excited that you went on this trip and had a badass uh, event. Yeah, sounds like you cooked yeah. some great stuff. It, it does, right? And it, it, that's what it's about, right? We, we hear it fails. We hear awesome. fails, but this is a barbecue win. 100%. And yeah. guess what? Guess what you win? Yeah, but before you go into that, oh. that jingle, before we get gloss over it a little little too much, uh, you can definitely hear the just the the, the happiness and glee of mm-hmm. the way they prepared their oh yeah their yeah, whatever guess, oh yeah pulled pork the uh, what yeah, we did talk all together. W- what you kind of got a subtle hint of is what the other people did oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like yeah, it sounds somebody like else cooked something bad might have been a fail in there somewhere <laughs> like yeah. somebody's just like I, I I can't even yeah. imagine what they brought or tried to. I can't imagine like an hey. unseasoned burger. You right. Know, right. Just no, like, hey, just, like, just open up cans. <laughs> tell us about like, that. Tell yeah. us about that casserole somebody made. Yeah. <laughs> tell us. Tell us just how bad some of that stuff was. Was there a barbecue fail out there? So you that's brought a vegan quiche for that's breakfast. Two or entries, by yes. the way. No, my my favorite part was watching Jan's face because I, I knew what was coming. Oh, I could yeah. see him smiling. Yeah. He was like, "Oh, I'm going to respond. It's going to be good." And I could tell. By the way. Jan's a bitch. I could tell. I could tell it was happening. I, I was. Watching. I'm okay with it. Hey, you know what's funny hey, though? Raul, zoom yeah. in on that. One. For as many Jan's a bitches there are, there's just as many. Jan is my spirit animal. So hey, there it is. That's I not accurate. That. But there is some Jan's there spirit is, animal. There whatever, is. That's fine. Whatever. You know what, Fuss? You know what you want? Suckabusters, suckabusters. Everybody wants some suckabusters. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, congratulations, man. I'm glad. I'm glad it worked out for you guys. Uh, especially being all, all all the way up there, so it's yeah. badass. Yeah. Can, and can we uh, can we end on a high note? Mm-hmm. Uh, just uh, John had alluded to us earlier in the group chat uh, something that that uh, really just uh, put a smile on my face. Mm-hmm. We surpassed over a hundred thousand downloads for the podcast. Yeah. I, I was pretty excited that, about that. That is amazing. Like uh, when I, I mean, what I'm talking we're about. We're not Joe Roganing it, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, he gets like millions of freaking week. Yeah, every know? day. Yeah, right? every day. Yeah, That's every day cool. we're just getting one from him. So yeah. it, it, it's fine. But yeah, it, it's it's something that that everybody here uh, and everybody that's been a part of the podcast should be proud of. Uh, right. And then of course the the, the family and the they uh, allow us to do all this like. You gotta celebrate the wins, baby. Yeah. You, gotta you gotta celebrate, celebrate the wins. Celebrate. We need them. Exactly. Yes. So, yes. hey, cheers to you guys. Uh, I know Alex is here listening. He's probably in a shower right now. He yeah. probably has his shower beer up in the air. Uh, <laughs> Let's go, Alex. Cheers Al. to you guys. We appreciate it. We love you. And it wouldn't be. Uh, it, it's all about the fans. It's all about the listeners. Uh, you guys run the show and support us. So, so we we give a huge thanks to all you guys. One hundred percent. Thank you guys. Hey, thank you guys. Seriously. Yeah. Oh, hey, I like that. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Hey, a, a quick a quick uh, little sneak preview. We do have uh, a couple of big interviews coming up. Yeah. We got a uh, meathead. Oh, meathead. Meathead from yeah. uh, AmazingRibs.com. Uh, uh, AmazingRibs.com. And uh, he is already on the schedule. Like, that's coming up ASAP. But we're also working with or uh, talking with Daniel Vaughn, Texas Monthly's Top 50. That's right. Uh, if you know, you know. He's uh, going to be on coming yeah, up probably in the know. next month or so. Yeah, Texas awesome. Monthly Barbecue. Yeah, mean, he, he is Texas Monthly Barbecue, so 100%. that's pretty cool. Anyway, that's what we got coming up. It, it, all I can say is, hey, guys, it's been great talking barbecue with you. Peace. Thanks, everybody. As we close out, big thanks to SmokerBuilder.com and the MBBQA for their unwavering support. Absolutely, and cheers to Barbecue News Magazine, Suckle Busters, and Dow Strong Knives for their contributions. And you know Yeti always has our back, and Cooley Nation ensures our drinks stay perfectly cold. Lastly, props to Cambro Manufacturing and, of course, a spicy night to Chicks of Smoke Seasoning. Thanks to all for powering this show. Until next time, keep smoking.